Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU, and I'm doing the slide walkthrough videos for our intro to economics unit plan. This is day two. And again, these videos are just to give you an idea of sort of what we are thinking with the flow of the lesson plan and, you know, what you might say on uh, on the slides. All right. So we start the day with the famous econ game where you auction off a dollar bill. So you'll need a dollar bill for this. You'll need to go and get a dollar bill and you want to auction it off. The rules are a little different than a normal auction. The highest bidder will get the dollar, just like a normal auction. You know, you bid 90 cents and then you're the highest bidder. Boom, you just made 10 cents. You just paid 90 cents for a dollar bill. Boom, great job. However, the second highest bidder will also have to pay you. So you explain the rules to students. Hey, if you agree to this, you're agreeing to these rules, highest bidder gets the dollar, but the second highest bidder also has to pay me. I usually put my Venmo on the board to be like, all right, you know, you can Venmo me because most people don't have cash. Then you start the bidding, you know? And we usually what happens is the bid goes up, it, it goes up, it goes up. And when you get to around like the 90, 95 cents, you want to talk to the second highest bidder and you want to say, hey, let's let's think about it. You're the second highest bidder. Let's say the second highest bidder is 90 cents. You're at 90 cents. You're about to lose 90 cents because you are the second highest bidder. If you go to a dollar, you know, you go above the high bidder, say the high bidder is at 95 cents. If you go to a dollar, you'll give me a dollar, but I'll give you a dollar. You'll be even. All right. And so they'll usually bump it up at that point. Then you go to the 95 cent person. Hey, you're about to lose 95 cents. If you go to a dollar five, yes, you'll pay me a dollar five, but you'll get a dollar. You only lose five cents. And they'll usually come over the top. So usually how this goes is all of a sudden they realize, oh, I better win this dollar. And so it, it escalates and escalates. I've had it go up to like $20. Now, I never actually collect uh, the money from the students. I don't know if that's legal or, or, or not, um, but it usually does escalate. The only time it doesn't escalate is if some student knows what's going on and they like immediately bid a dollar. Um, that's like the one or two times when I had it where it hasn't escalated. All right. And so you do this. And like I said, almost every time I've done this, you end up selling the dollar for more than a dollar. So you look really, really good. You just sold a dollar for more than a dollar. I mean, that's that's pretty good economics. And the idea here is the incentives, the way the incentives of the game were designed is to encourage that sort of one upping as uh, as that as the bids go on. So those are the incentives in the game and the incentives. If you design the incentives right, you could sell a dollar for more than a dollar. Now, the sunk cost fallacy to remember from day one, the sunk cost fallacy in this game is, well, once you understand the incentives of this game, you know, once you start bidding, if you're in that bidding war, basically your money's gone. Basically, you are in this death spiral. And so it's best to just cut bait and get out. So we're sort of reinforcing that idea of the sunk cost fallacy from the previous day while introducing this new idea about the importance of incentives. Famous quote from Charlie Munger, who is a famous investor, show me the incentive and I will show you the outcome. So we are highlighting the importance of incentives. This really comes into play when making policy. So every policy is going to have an intent. They're going to say, all right, this is what we're trying to do with this policy. We're trying to lower homelessness or we're trying to raise wages or we're trying to give people better, better, better health care, whatever the policy is. It has a goal. OK, but if the incentives are wrong, the policy's outcome will not match its intent. All right. Famous quote um, here policy outcomes don't care about the intentions. So just because a policy has a certain an intent doesn't mean that will be the outcome. Just because the policy says here, this is this policy is outlined to decrease homelessness, that doesn't necessarily mean that is going to be the outcome. What really matters is the incentives. Does the policy get the incentives right such that that outcome is realized? And many times, if a policy doesn't have the incentives right, it may backfire completely and do the opposite of what's uh, what it is intended to do. And so if those incentives are wrong, we may go off over into unintended consequences land, and we may actually have a full backfire of the policy. All right. So these unintended consequences, you know, due to the incentives, they may not matter much. You know, they may be completely, you know, benign. So the example we have here is, all right, the NBA, basketball, they add a three-point line to increase outside uh, shooting. That's the intent. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get more outside shooting, open the game up. And so 
Um, you know, and that was that, you know, that was the result. But there is this unintended consequence now that before this, before the three point line, all your star players in, 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 in the NBA are big guys, you know, Wilt Chamberlain, uh, Kareem, um, Bill Russell. They're all, you know, it's the center that is the star. And going back to the 50s, George, George Mikan. But after that three point line, now shorter players um, can become superstars like our man right here, uh, Steph Curry. Okay. Now, some policies, they may have unintended consequences. They may have um, incentives um, that work to counter the policy, and yet the policy still achieves its goal. So the example here that we're talking that we that we use is, you know, seatbelts and airbags in a car. So these are designed to increase safety. The unintended consequence here is that people may take more risks knowing their car is super safe. You know, so, uh, you know, in the extreme example, you know, you, you know, you can imagine if there was like a spike right in your steering wheel, you're going to be a very careful driver. And so you may not think about it, but, you know, there is some percentage of the population such that, you know, with the airbags, with the seatbelts, with the new cars, they feel safer and they take more risks on the road. Now, this is ultimately going to lower safety. However, given how safe the airbags and seatbelts are, probably over, it probably overcomes those that unintended consequence. And ultimately, we, you know, we are safer due to the seatbelts and the airbags. OK, now some policies may have unintended consequences such that the actually outcome of the policy um, is the opposite of its intent. The policy completely backfires. The famous example that we go through here is this town in Italy that has a bunch of snakes. So they're like, all right, we got to get rid of these snakes. So they say, look, if you bring us a snake, we uh, 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 will give you some money. It's a bounty on uh, bounty on snakes. So how might this backfire? You can have your students guess um, if you know the story. Basically, citizens started breeding snakes. They started raising snakes in their basement. And so the outcome of the policy was more snakes, not less uh, less snakes. Now, we have a super fun interactive here. Um, uh, this, this I'm, I'm really excited about this one, where it's like a choose your own adventure, where students get to go through and basically pick policies and see what the unintended consequences are. So, you know, so the goal is to help farmers. We start out with two different policies. You can guarantee a high milk price or you can put tariffs on poultry to help poultry farmers. And so students can pick, all right, which one do I want to go through? Okay. I just played this. So it's already like saying what I had done before. And so we have this higher price for milk. Now the unintended consequence is they produce too much milk. So what are you going to do with all the extra milk? So you can tell the farmers to make less or you can buy it and you can play through and you can see the uh, unintended consequences here on this one. Okay. And so there's a bunch of different paths you can go down with different policies and back, you can see how them backfire. And then ultimately, you know, you sort of end up at a point just like a choose your own the adventure. So you can have the students play it multiple times. You can play it as a class and then ask some follow up, uh, follow up questions. What unintended consequences surprised them the most? Um, and uh, which ones did they actually predict? Which one did they, they think was going to happen and happened? Okay. If you have time after this, you can go through some fun examples of unintended consequences that we've sort of uh, provided for you. It's a personal favorite of mine. It's an NBA player who had a $500,000 bonus if he shot above 35%. What are some potential unintended, unintended conse excuse me, consequences? You can ask your students, what, 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 what might happen here? Okay, Can give a little hint that there's four games left in the season, and Mo had just gotten right above 35%, 35.1. Students can take a guess at what he did in those last four games. He did not shoot at all to maintain that, or he didn't shoot any three-pointers, to maintain that 35.1. This is his Instagram post at the end of the season after he got his $500,000 bonus. Another example, the Roman consul says, hey, we're going to give free wheat to the citizens of Rome. Everybody deserves to have free wheat. If you are a citizen, how might this backfire? Again, students can guess. You can guess. Well, the farmers in the surrounding surrounding Rome quit and just moved into Rome to get some free wheat. And guess what? Now you now you don't have any wheat. Another fun example is in Sweden, they switched from driving on the left side of the road to the right side of the road. And so there was a day where they're like, all right, we're all going to switch. And so they were really worried about 
accidents, you know, because they're switching on which side of the road they drive on. So the government pays for all these ambulances. They have all these people watching. And what is the unintended consequence is, well, actually, there were way less accidents because everyone's like, whoa, this is the day we're switching. I'm going to be extra careful and it was a complete waste of money. All this uh, this money they spent on the uh, uh, the ambulances. OK. As an exit ticket, you can ask for unintended consequences from the students that they've experienced in their own life. There's lots of fun answers here in my experience. Um, all right, and that is uh, that is day two. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.